Hey guys, I'm Woody. Welcome to Piano Shack. Today we are going to revisit the topic of my MAME cabinet here. I'm going to show you some MAME front ends such as Mailer, Hyperspin and one that I wrote myself. Before we get stuck in, I'm just going to show you some of the changes I've made to the internals of the cabinet. So there we go. I've really tidied all the wires. You can see there's just one big thick wire here going all the way up to the monitor, the keyboard. And I've spent a lot of time and effort strapping down some of these parts so they don't like roll around inside the cabinet. I've used some of this metal, I don't know what you call those, metal bands that you can just screw down into the cabinet. There's a top tip for you there. I've used it for the power supply here. Even the power brick down here is sort of screwed in place with these metal things. You can buy a big roll of it, like five meters long or 10 meters long. Do you remember we had an issue with the vinyl wrap here bubbling up where it overlaps the black vinyl wrap? Well, I fixed that as well. As I suspected, the only thing that we needed to do was heat it up with a heat gun sort of shrink it a bit and reactivate the glue and then I pressed it down with a rag and that came out looking really good so this thing is in top shape again. This is the front end that comes with MAME. In any case, recent versions of MAME, this is built in. It's a just a text-based interface. It's not graphical. There's no flashy graphics or anything, but this is the interface I find myself using the most of all of my front ends. Uh, it's very, very simple to use. When you fire it up, you just get a bunch of 10, 20, about 20 random ROMs that come up here. Here you see the name of the ROM. Uh, mouser for example here down here it tells you the name of the game you see so the, the game rom is just up to eight characters and down here it says the name of the rom and a little bit of information about it the release date and so on and so on if i want a specific game then this is pretty cool i can either type in the name of the game for example donkey kong of course and then up comes d kong i could have typed in d kong as well to get that game um, so that's pretty cool very easy to find the game that you want. Let's try, I'm not going to load Dockman for you. Uh, I'm not going to load Donkey Kong. Let's take Dockman. I have no idea what that is. It's probably not obvious on the videos, but I do have a mouse and a keyboard up here on the top of the cabinet. Luckily, I'm a tall guy, so I can just about type in text and enter stuff and use the mouse as well if I'm trying to configure something on the system. So here you go. Not sure what this is. Obviously it's a load of crap. And many of these games have not <laughs> stood the test of time, that's for sure. Anyway, let's jump out of there. I've got two buttons configured here actually. Let me talk a little bit about that. We have one player start, two player start. I'm using one joystick for single player and six different buttons here that are sort of arranged in an ergonomic position. Uh, in addition to that, I have a green button here, which is used to load a credit into the game. And the red button here is mapped to escape. So that jumps you out of MAME when you're running an emulation. And it will also take you straight out of uh, the front end here of MAME. So you can see once we've jumped out of a game, we've got a different sort of random game coming up here. Yeah, that one's mapped to five. And I just press one player start. Uh, no, obviously not. You have to use the keyboard on the top if you want to select a game. You could map all that up, but I just haven't bothered. So there you go. That is the main front end. Now we are going to turn our attention to the next most advanced front end I have on here, which is Mailer or Marla. I don't know how you pronounce it, and I don't remember what it means. There you go. Marla front end. Mm -hmm. 
So this one has a richer interface. We have a graphical interface here. And what you are seeing is a desktop wallpaper I downloaded from the net with the right resolution for my screen. And I created these viewports in an image editor here so that we can have a little video or a screenshot of the game playing. On the left, we have the navigation here. And this is all pretty configurable. You can edit some files to change the size and the fonts and the number of items on the screen. You can change the size of this. You can also add other little viewports here if you want to see, say, the name of the ROM or some date information or the CPU and all that stuff. It's really nice. I can press one of these buttons down here and pull up the game history, which is great. We can scroll up and down as well. Uh, this information is, whoops, if you get to the top, it makes that noise. This information is fetched from the history.dat file. So you just have to configure the locations of the data files and you're good to go. Press that one again to get rid of it. We can jump up and down the letters. B, A, B. Somehow I'm going backwards here, apparently. Let's go back down to C, because I saw a game there that I like. G, F, E, D, C. Okay, and then we can just go up here to get the game we want. Oh, it's a lot of games here. It's going to take a little while. I saw Circus Charlie here. We get some... Um, screenshots or a video of the game, which is great. If you want to have a little preview, I'm going to tell you a little bit more later about how to get hold of these video files. Um, but I'm just going to show you today how we launch a game with Mailer. Where is Circus Troll here? Where are you, my friend? There you are. Whoops, jumped over it. There we are. This is quite a fun game. I love the music on this. Have a listen to the music. It's so cheerful. We'll jump in there. Did I press the quit button by mistake? I don't want to quit. We want to launch the game. Okay, the one button. It's very easy to forget which buttons you map to different things, and I haven't played these systems for a while. Circus Charlie, let's credit it up with the green button. Off we go. Let's take it easy. I guess we just got to jump through here. This is a bit of a hidden gem, I think. Uh, listen to that music. Let's see if I can... Uh. Okay, one more shot, Circus Charlie. Oh, I'm useless and I'm not really concentrating. There you go, that's a cool game. Go check it out if you have it on your main. Let's jump out of here. Right, let's move on to the most complex and the most rich and the most graphically fantastic front end of them all. I think it still is. This was certainly the case a couple of years ago. This is Hyperspin then. Now, this is pretty fantastic. We have a spinning wheel here with all the games on. Same as before, we get a nice video rendition of the game in the middle here. I'm gonna carry on here a little bit. We're not, we're not getting the full effect of this yet. There we go. For many of these games, I've also downloaded like this animation thing here that kicks in when you select the game. If there's no animation available, you get this sort of standard default animation. Cubert, that's strange. Well, that's some other other form of Qbert. You see what I mean? There's another graphic there that kicks in. Pretty cool, isn't it? Now I've got to say, it was a lot of work to set this up. There are some pretty hairy and complicated XML files that you need to configure. Do that using a text editor. You also need to remember 
You also need to remember that the uh, game videos you need to download from somewhere. You need to download the animations from somewhere and you need to download these fancy wheel graphics from somewhere as well, this mar marquee art. And I can really rec recommend you going to emu, as in emulation, emumovies.com. I think that's where I pulled most of these from. They have FTP servers where you can download these and they even have a really cool, um, they have a very cool app you can install on your PC which scans through your folders, checks what ROMs you have, and then automatically downloads all of the artwork that you need. Now then, we can navigate here by, if we want, we can jump through the letters. Let's go to letter C. What do we do now? Okay, now I'm in the C category. I can also use the buttons here on the right I've mapped to jump up C, D, E, to jump up through the letters one at a time. That's quite nice. And there's also, we can scroll really fast through all the games if we want to. And there's even a hyperspin button. I'm not sure where I've mapped that, but if you press that, it scrolls even faster. Maybe it's that one there. You really can whiz through the games at a high rate of knots. Should we play something? Let's try this one. Oh, Gravitar, I think that's a bit of a classic. Will that work? Let's try. And it's probably either one or the green button to start the game. It seemed to be the green button here. There's no consistency between my front ends. I think, is this a, like a trackball game? No idea. You can't pull up the um, game information from the history dot that with this emulator. Kind of a, a sort of asteroids thing. You get the idea? Now, let's jump out of here and I need to do that on the computer. Would you like to exit? Yes, we're out of there. Start intruder alert, intruder alert. That's a humanoid, that's a intruder. Finally, I'd like to show you a front end that I made all by myself. Uh, I first programmed it in a DOS bat script. You know, this is the scripting language that comes with Windows. Then for some reason that I don't quite remember, I changed to the Java programming language. I call this the Feeling Lucky Launcher. And we start it up with this. The idea here, let, let me back up a bit. Sometimes when you have thousands of ROMs, of games on, on the system here, it can be a little bit bewildering knowing which game to choose. You can be a little bit spoiled for choice. So I thought it'd be quite nice to have a MAME front end that just launches a random game for you. And this is exactly what this does. Let's kick it up. No graphical user interface, but it tells you what game is coming up, iRobot, and then it launches it. Here we go. Ah, I pressed the red button by mistake. Now we're gonna get War of the Bugs or something. Here we have it. I think this is fun, actually. You never quite know what you're gonna get. I call it the feeling lucky launcher. This looks like a centipede or rip off. Should we do a few random games, see what we get? Okay, now we're gonna get final lap three. That's gonna be a racing game, which isn't so optimal on my system here. Step on the pedal to start. That's a terrible noise. Um, okay, it's gonna launch another one for me here. I did have different versions of this. I had one version where you could, if you didn't like the look of the game, you could press a button and it would skip through and give you another choice. And then if you just left it for a couple of seconds, it would automatically launch. I don't remember why I got rid of that. There is also a feature where it will print up the information from the main history.that file to give you a bit of background information about the game before it loads. That was nice as well. And I think, even though I wrote this myself, it's one of my favorite front ends. I tend to use this one and the MAME built-in GUI most of the time. This is cool graphics on this game. Should we have a go? Okay, which dude should we have? Should we have him? Come on, push select. I don't know what button is select. 
Let's go for, let's go for this one. Ar is that Argentina? Greece, I know. Showing my ignorance, sorry. Uh, this is one of your classic 80s footy games. Well, I say classic, I've never seen it before in my life. Push start, oh, that's the second player. Whee! Let's score a goal, and then we'll get out of here. Oh, good save. Let's get out, get out of here anyway. So this will go on forever and ever. When you quit the game, it will launch a new one for you. Pretty good fun. Here we have a Space Invaders, a badly done Space Invaders. Let's do a couple more, this is fun. Famicom box. And the cool thing about this is it's gonna pull up games that you'd never choose yourself because they are so obscure or so uh, little known or so crappy, but this gives you a good chance to try them out. It also tends to pull up ROMs that don't work for various reasons. Let's try one more. Bad dudes. Yeah, they are bad looking dudes. So with bad dudes, I think we'll call it a day. I have shown you Get out of that. I've shown you several of the front ends that are available for main. There might be other ones these days. I'm a little, a couple of years out of date. I built this system two years ago and I haven't really kept track of the latest trends in front ends since then. But um, I don't even have the latest version of main. I'm using, in case you're curious, this is 0148 and we're now on about 016, 017. But this does everything I need and I have the ROMs for this one as well. There you go. I hope that was interesting to you. Uh, stay tuned for more updates on the arcade scene. I'm thinking about building a Raspberry Pi powered bar top arcade, which would be very interesting to cover on the channel, I think. So if you're into this, remember to subscribe so you don't miss any updates. And don't forget to leave a comment or a like because I appreciate that a lot. I'll see you again soon. Take care. Ta-da!